Hey guys, today we're pouring a 48 by 24 foot basement down inside of 9 foot concrete walls. Now I'm going to tell you the easiest way to do this. This video is going to be part one of a three part series. So the second part will be us pouring the garage. Then the third part, if you can see way in the back, that upper floor, I'm going to show you how I used what I call a mini me trial, power trial, to finish that concrete floor. If you've never heard of that, make sure you like and subscribe. So you can come back and see part three for that. Now today the spec on the concrete was 3500 PSI with fiber mesh, water reducer, half air. And you can see the prep. We use uh, Stego Industries 15 mil vapor barrier. Just want to shout out to Stego for that. And then we had ISO strip up against the wall. This was on a three quarter inch crush rock sub base that was put in in layers, compacted really hard and then this wire mesh. You can see it right now I'm pulling up the wire mesh just for you guys that are the wire police out there that don't think we pull wire up. <laughs> That's me over there pulling it up. And that was the spec on this job. So four inches thick, basic simple concrete basement floor. Now the easiest way to do these is with a dangle pump which is what we're doing right now. This is what we call this. So we got a pump truck set up. I'll show it to you a little bit Later in the video, when we get on to the second truck, you'll be able to see the pump truck a little bit better. We got four loads of concrete coming. We're going to pour all, th all three of these levels here right now this morning. So we got four loads of concrete, and we're going to dump this first truck right out. There's probably about nine yards of concrete on this first truck. The little piece we poured in the beginning was just for a, uh, it was basically a footing, and then you can see on top of the concrete wall LaJoy Brothers from Augusta, Maine did the walls and they left a shelf in the top of that wall so the floor trusses will sit right in that and then I believe there's a set of stairs coming down right where we did that footing part to start with that thickened area so when we set the ISO strip around the perimeter we set up a laser we shot our grades four inches above the crush rock uh, marked it with a pencil, then snapped a chalk line, and then you, we glued the ISO strip right to the chalk line. So we use that to go by. You can see Jim is way back there on the on the left, mag and the pads right to the top of the ISO strip. And then I'm in the middle right now, shooting grades with my I got a Dewalt uh, self-leveling rotary laser setup, and we use that for those wet pads in the middle. Then we just strike them off by hand. Simple, pretty simple stuff for us. This is a a typical job the typical day for us pouring concrete we do concrete like this at least five days a week houses garages patios stuff like that so if you want to learn how to do this stuff make sure you click on the link to the concrete underground down below in the in the show notes or the description of the video and in there is all my trainings about how to do stuff like this so first trucks down he's he's pulled out he's washing up Second truck right now is backing up to the pump truck, getting mixed up. And in that time, in that amount of time, it takes us to get this kind of leveled out, screeded out. The second truck should be ready to go. Now we're using our DeWalt Power Shift battery screed. We got a 14 foot board on there. The board is actually from MBW. We like that triangular type board. It's really lightweight. And then the battery screed from DeWalt, we're really liking that. That has a lot of power. It's very quiet, very smooth to operate. It can get down nine yards of concrete basically in about, I don't know how, that about 60 seconds really is about as long as that takes. All right, so I'm going to get you around to the other side of the house foundation. This is just a residential house in Portland, Maine. There's this little back piece. I'm going to be showing you how to use the Mini-Me power trial to finish that. And then there's the garage, two, two or three car garage over there. So there's where the pump truck sat up. He could reach everything really easily from there. And we're just dangle pumping the concrete down inside the basement. The basement floor figured around 16 yards of concrete. What makes it easy with the pump is it, you can see it just puts it right where you need it. Versus backing the concrete truck right up to the foundation. Maybe hooking on an extra chute and kind of shooting it in and pulling the concrete all around. This is probably the simplest way to do it. In a pump truck where we're from, 
I believe they charge about 1100 bucks to get that pump truck here for four hours. And I'll just let you know, it took us to get everything here poured with the pump. It took us about two hours to get all three of these different levels poured. That red stuff you see, that's what you they call stego tape. That's a that's basically a waterproof type of tape. So that yellow 15 mil vapor barrier is to keep any moisture from coming up from the sub base into the slab, then into the house or into the basement. So that'll block the vapor from coming up through the subgrade. And then the tape just tapes together the seams where the overlap is and around the pipes. That's just what the spec called for. Now the spec on a lot of our jobs doesn't call for that so we'll just use like a clear six mil vapor barrier on any of the other jobs that don't call for like a 15 mil vapor barrier like this one and the specs on our jobs are different it seems like from job to job they're not all the same some of them are engineered some of them aren't all right so we're on to the second truck and remember when Whenever you're pumping like this, there's about a yard of concrete that's in the hopper of the concrete pump truck as well as all the line. And that, that yard that's in there is still from the first truck. So when you start on your second truck, you want to make sure your first truck, that first yard of concrete connects to the first truck. So when you go to finish it, um, it won't finish funny. You won't have a spot in a different corner that's setting up faster because you started maybe in a different corner with that last yard from the first truck. We like to dump out a lot of concrete when we screed because of the experience factor of everybody. You know, Darren, Darren's the one holding the hose. He's got 30 plus years. Uh, Eric's with the rake right there. He's got 30 years. Luke's got the gray shirt on. He's like 25 years. Jim's got 30 years. <laughs> There's a lot of concrete experience right here. So we can dump out a lot of concrete at once knowing that we can get it screeded down really fast, knowing how much time we got to work with it. And a lot of that depends on type of day it is, how hot or how cold the concrete feels to us. Um, we could, This concrete was setting up a little faster than just regular normal concrete. It was pretty warm when it showed up. It was warm right out of the concrete plant so we were you know we weren't really rushing to get it down but we were we were hustling we were moving because we know it can go from going down real easy to going down real hard in just a matter of a couple minutes uh, so we like easy a lot better so that's me running the screed right now and that's just 14 feet of really easily screeded concrete right there. And you can see the two guys raking, Darren and Eric, behind me raking. They're basically just keeping it at the level I need it at, which is just a tiny bit higher than grade. And then the board on the screed does the rest. Slow and steady. That's as simple as it is right there. So this is a good shot of everything pretty long house it's got to the left there where you see the excavator up up top there's gonna actually be an entryway that'll be a little piece of stamp concrete right there we'll do at a later date now when we do jobs like this we know it's gonna be hot we know it's gonna be sunny we try to order concrete for as early as possible today the earliest we could get it was 7 a.m. Part of that's because we're working in a city and they have uh, laws that say you can't start any job before 7 a.m. in the morning, basically because of sound. They don't want us waking everybody up. Normally, if this wasn't a city ordinance, if it was just in a town, we'd have concrete here at 6 a.m. Yeah, it gives you a really good look of how easy that DeWalt screed works and how fast it gets a floor down like this. Probably the hardest part is just getting it back out of the foundation. So once we get the house done, you can see the other two trucks are sitting up there waiting. Those two trucks will do the garage and that back patio. So we're going to hustle to get them down before that concrete gets too hot. 
the one guy, basically what, what will happen here in a second you'll see is one guy will finish up this little piece and then jump out where that would looks like a hole in the foundation, a cutout. That gives you a good idea. The, you can see the laser there too that we're using. And then the rest of us are going to move right onto the garage. We'll get, we'll get rid of that second truck. There was about a half a yard left on him, so we'll just dump him right out in the garage. Get him out of the way so the third truck can get in place, stop mixing up. But if you're wondering if, you know, $1,100, it seems or it sounds like a lot of money. But really, as easier as it makes the job, it's, it's definitely well worth something like this. Especially when you're down inside something with tall walls. The, the distance on the chutes on the back of the truck, they don't go very far when they have to shoot down this much distance. So you end up using, you know, you end up hooking on some extra chutes or putting an extra chute on a saw hus, and then you're pulling a lot of extra concrete that you don't need to versus if you use just a dangle pump like this. So Darren's gonna kinda show you how we just finish up something like this. We usually keep one guy back, like you can see Luke up top there, because he's gonna pass him back down the ladder. If he just takes off, you know, if Darren, Darren's got a little bit too much in there, so he's gonna get some out of there. So if you just leave him by himself, it takes 10 times longer actually to get that little piece done. So we always leave a guy back to help. And it's vice versa too. If he needed some, there'd be a little pile of concrete up there. He could just pass him down some concrete to fill in. Probably takes just about as long to do this one last little piece as it does the whole floor though. So again, part two will be, you're going to see how we do the garage and what that green stuff was in the garage. I'll explain that to you on part two. And then part three will be the upper piece. I'll show you how to finish concrete with a power trial that only weighs about 30 pounds. Uh, that'll be new. I haven't, I haven't had done a video on that one yet. So make sure you subscribe. Come on back. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.